It's worn out, beat up, and missing a few teeth. And it's also part of a major milestone for a Metro Vancouver project. Yeah, it feels great. Yeah, this is a significant achievement for the team that we feel really happy about. It's the front section of a tunnel boring machine, which has finished digging the new Amasis water supply tunnel. Back in late 2023, before the machine could start tunneling, the front part, which is called the cutter head, had to be carefully lowered into this 50 meter deep shaft in Surrey. As the cutter head dug its way forward, more equipment was attached to the back of it, including gear for moving the excavated dirt out of the tunnel. The tunnel boring machine steadily chewed its way underground and underwater, deep under the Fraser River from Surrey to New Westminster. The machine not only did the digging, it also constructed the tunnel's concrete lining as it went. It might sound straightforward, but creating the 2.3 kilometer tunnel was not easy. It's just very difficult ground here in Vancouver. You've got a lot of glaciated soils and a lot of variability. We had points of this tunnel drive where the ground was so soft that the machine was willing to sink. And we've had points on this drive where we had difficulty advancing because the ground was just so hard, filled with cobbles and rocks and variable soils. This hard ground meant the boring machine's cutting tools needed a lot of maintenance. The tremendous pressure 50 meters below ground made that task very challenging and hazardous. After a year and a half of arduous tunneling, the machine approached its destination, a shaft in New Westminster. It was another critical moment for the project. The shaft needed preparations before the machine's breakthrough because of its proximity to homes and businesses. During the breakthrough itself, when the machine is coring through the shaft walls, um, there's a chance that uh, groundwater and soil can flow through into the shaft under high pressure, and this creates a big risk for the project. To minimize the risk of catastrophic failure, the shaft needed to be kept intact. It was filled up with sand and water ahead of time, and the tunnel boring machine broke through the concrete wall of the shaft smoothly and safely. Then came the final challenge of lifting the cutter head, all 10 tons of it, out of the 60 meter shaft. It still contained its huge assortment of gears and cables. The back of the machine was removed through the tunnel out from the other shaft in Surrey. A specialized crane was brought in for the job. Slowly and steadily, the cutter head emerged from underground for the first time in nearly two years. The hardworking cutter head no longer looked quite as fresh as it did when it first went underground. But its battered state is a testament to the dedication of the project crews. This is a prime example of successfully delivering a large capital project in our region. Like any big project, you're going to run into issues and challenges, but really it always comes down to how you manage and mitigate risk, and I think we've done that effectively. The project continues, as there's much more to be done on the Anasis Water Supply Tunnel, including installation of a massive steel pipe. When completed, the tunnel will be able to withstand a major earthquake and will bring drinking water to the growing population south of the Fraser River.